True Detective. Yes. Yeah. So this is season four, and I was really excited about it. And I was trying to remember the first three seasons. Number one is considered some of the best television. For sure. Right. For sure. Who starred in that one? That was Matthew McConaughey. And I was just prompting you there because I realized I'm about to step on your toes. And I'm like, <laughs> I know she's about to say it. So I'm just like, who starred in it, Catherine? Oh, thank you for the setup. There you go, yeah. So it was Matthew McConaughey mm-hmm. and Woody Harrelson and also Michelle Monaghan played uh, Woody Harrelson's oh, wife. Oh, right. Okay, yes. So I remember it very, very clearly. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. And then we realized, oh, it was going to be a crime anthology. So season two was going to be a whole... So they're not coming back. Correct. Yeah. Which made sense because, you know, I mean... These were movie stars doing television. Correct. Right. And it felt very much like, oh, yeah, you're going to do one season of this. Mm-hmm. It was a prestigious series, incredibly well received. But mm-hmm. it makes sense that these movie stars are only going to do one season. Mm-hmm. So the anthology understanding kind of gets in there finally. And you're like, oh, we're not getting them back. It's going to be something something different for season two. They went through the ringer on that one. I mean, they needed a hiatus themselves. That was like all of the X-Files compiled into one season and these two characters, it was real rough for them. It was like, yeah, I don't want them back. I don't want that crime back. I don't want anything back in that season. Although they were really interesting characters. So of course we would have been like, yeah, sure. It's what you call um, complex. Yeah. The depth. Layers. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay, so the series was created by Nick Pizzolatto, mm-hmm. and that first season had a really interesting device. They were being interviewed and talking about the crime, and also flashing back, and we were getting to see the crime. <laughs> yeah, Matthew McConaughey, his sort of like uh, during and then post, he really chose, it really affected him. Yeah, yeah well, there was a lot of deep philosophical stuff he was always I, going psychological into. Psychological... I don't know. There's a whole creepiness about yeah, it. It was a creepy yeah. crime and a creepy, but very well done season. Okay, mm-hmm. so then season two was Vince Vaughn, Colin Farrell, Rachel McAdams, mm-hmm. and then Taylor Kitsch and Kelly Riley as well. But I don't know if people didn't love it as much. I think they were just annoyed that uh, it was like, what? Oh, John. Here's the deal. It's the only season you need to watch. Oh, that's a Rachel McAdams Wait thing. A minute. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I watched it. It's about season two. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, So, but then I realized as this season four was happening, I had no memory at all of season three. Yeah. When you said four seasons, I was like, what am I I not remembering? I don't know if I watched it. It was Mahershala Ali and Stephen Dorff. I don't remember it. I didn't watch it. Yeah. Okay. I I think I did, but I... I mean, because I'm like, yes, I like Stephen Dorff. So I'm like, I And Mahershala I Ali is amazing. Yes. So, but I don't know. Somehow I... I did watch it. I remember nothing about it. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway. Okay. So now on to the very exciting return with season four. And there's enough time in between. These are not on a streaming platform, so they're not bingeable. You are having to wait week to week, which kind of builds up anticipation, I think. Well, they are available on Max, but... Again, only one episode yeah. per week, that format, mm-hmm. because it's HBO. So, all right. So this season, season four, Jodie Foster, when the first promos came out, I was so excited. Yes. I was like, what? Jodie Foster's so amazing. I was, she only yeah. does prestigious projects. Well, good for her. And she likes to be a detective on a real weirdo. <laughs> oh, Silence of the Lambs. Yes. Well, okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. I mean, that's an interesting parallel way back Ed. way back okay okay so she is playing a looks like a sheriff or something like that in this small alaskan town oh my god i would die obviously she is a police officer because the other person is not with apd or what it's like something pd and it's like you're not with pd alaska pd oh yeah she's a like a patrol officer okay so john is referring to atlanta pd what pd was it does any of us know it's got to be alaska right or um, yes for sure i mean fictitious town. Oh. Innis? Looks so cold and oh, awful. Of course. It's so funny because I just was watching A Murder at the End of the World, which was... Oh, right. well, I brought up again. I, it's so cold. And then I, this I, one I, also cold. And Fargo also cold. It's all these cold, cold, snowy landscapes. But this had a supernatural element to it as well, but it's sort of leaning into what is the indigenous belief in Mother Nature and the spirit world. Yeah, it is kind of surprising because that first episode, I was like, oh, wait, are we saying something mysteriously magical might be happening? I mean, we're going to see how it plays out because we're still in progress right now. The unexplained. Yeah, that's kind of not 
normally what they do in True Detective. In the first three seasons, there wasn't like yes, a magical there, element. Y- yes, there was a supernatural element. What? In the first one, that was the whole thing. Remember those little dolls that they'd made? And it was sort but of like... But that was more like a cult and it wasn't But they're like trying magic. to conjure up All right. supernatural spirits. There is an element in these anthology seasons that plays into that. The little bit of the unexplainable around a crime, a murder. Something's happened that now brought, like, how did this happen? An element you can't understand. Okay, interesting. So, I don't remember it that way, but I'm going to uh, allow. I'm going to allow it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to allow it. Okay. Okay, so co-starring with Jodie Foster is this amazing young woman. Yeah. Her name is Kaylee Reese. And when I first saw her just moving, I was like, oh my God, is she like an MMA fighter? What is her deal? Physically very yes. present, intimidating. Yeah, she's kind of just... Not big, but like in incredible shape and holds herself in a way that you're Mm -hmm. like, oh, there's something going on. Yeah, she's a boxer, which, you know, other people might have known. I did not know this. Right. So it makes sense. She has this physicality. Mm -hmm. And what I love about this setup is that her character and Jodie Foster's character, they have a history and they don't really get along. So they're in the middle of trying to figure out this interesting crime and they're having their own problems. Well... They're very strong personalities, and Mm -hmm. Jodie Foster is not the most warm and cuddly. No. A woman of this age brings a depth to a character. Listen, she wears it right on her face, but at the same time, when she delivers a line or gives a look, like, oh, there's there's a lot behind that. Can I just make one little comment about, Yeah. yeah, she's not wearing any makeup, really. She just looks her age, whatever. Her hair looks too good. Did you notice like how nice her hair was? John was give her something. Okay. Come on, her Take hair was easy. like beautifully. Oh, I don't know, blow no, dried. It was. And... It was fine. Okay, well, first of all, I you thought... certainly could not go out with wet hair. I mean, you need well, to fully true. do your hair every day before you left the house. You'd freeze your head off. I mean, I literally. do love it when they have like a beanie, like pulled way down and a big coat. Oh, yeah. I just could not survive. I will say it now. There's no way. Yeah, zombie apocalypse. Maybe you'd be okay, but not if it's just cold. No, I said I wouldn't have survived that either. I don't really think, I mean, survival of skills and times, no matter how they come, I think I'm fucked. Wow. Well. So, the only one recently was the one on Netflix that we just, did all, we even talk about that one, the Julia Roberts one? We did, okay. I don't think we did. It's on Netflix, it's a Julia Roberts movie, it's only, it's been out like maybe a month. Leave the world behind. Leave the world behind. I mean, that one I was like, well, maybe. I mean, there's not zombies. You just have to avoid self-driving Teslas crashing yeah, so into I'm you. Like, that's well, a, maybe. That's a How do you feel peril. about fungus? Fucked. Among Us. Yeah, Fungus <laughs> Among Us for The Last of Us. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot I'm like, no, probably no, not. No, I'm not going to survive that. No, no. Catherine, you are correct. We did not talk about it. Mm. Thank you. I was confusing it with A Murder at the End of the World. Yes. Yes, that's a different one, which is not apocalyptic. Just feels like it because they're all alone up in wherever. But we'll write it back to Jay Foster with the only parallel is kind of also made me think like Julie Roberts also goes for like kind of a hard edge woman in that one. Yeah, she's and not kind of glammed up rough. in any way yeah. mm-hmm. either. So, but Jodie Foster, I mean, like I said, give her something. She had to have her hair done. I mean, you couldn't even go out good. there. You her couldn't go out really in the good. world with wet hair. No way. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we've touched on that it's set in Alaska and it was actually shot in Alaska and oh. Iceland, I believe. So, I mean, it looks authentically I had, cold. I had prayed for them. It was like partially a soundstage. Now I'm like, it wasn't? Oh. I don't think so. Then The acting was halfway done for you by the environment Just alone. be cold. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a good mystery, the setup so far. Mm-hmm. There's a research station and everybody's oh. missing. So creepy. That is a supernatural element. What are you even talking about? Isn't She's that kind of like the movie The Thing, too? Isn't that they're like in a research station and bad stuff's going down? Yes, except that who knows what you guys are talking about. We've had one episode so far. We don't okay, know. Well, a lot whatever. of it's projection great. right now. A lot of projection. Okay, John. it's great. Uh, by the way, the nighttime shoots got down to negative nine. <gasps> Forget it. Oh, God. That sounds terrible. I don't want that at all. Oh, my God. Okay, so... I know this is the wrong streamer, broadcast network, whatever, but uh, that is not what we mean by Netflix and chill. Thank you. (laughs) But, uh, (laughs) yes. Um, Other thing is, you know, they have just so many layers going on. Like, everybody has a back... layers? Well, that, and also there's just so many layers within a character story. Talk about ex-wives or her daughter which then reveals like oh you're not my real mom and she immediately like basically her open scene Jodie Foster's daughter and her that is a real there's some problems well as I've always said teenagers especially girls in most shows today have a real 
They are portrayed semi-accurately, but wow, they are challenging. Yeah, they're hard to watch story-wise. It's often not fun. No. Okay. Yeah, puberty. Yeah. A joy to watch. Okay, so that's season four of True Detective Night Country, and I'm into it. 